Welcome back, folks, to the next episode of the Believe in FCS Football next. Podcast, the best FCS football podcast out there, your go-to source for FCS football analysis from two former FCS football players. I'm Joe DeLeon, joined by my former teammate and roommate, Sean Anderson. For some reason, he is mumbling and snickering while I'm doing the intro. What, what's the deal? What do you, what, you, been, you disappear for a week. And we don't record. How is this you the next all, episode? You to, it's the you current. Le- to why can't you just say you are listening to the uh, Believe in FCS Football podcast? This is I not don't the know. Next. I we say not things talk- sometimes. You're not going to be saying, okay, next week FCS starts. Okay, we're you know that's not how this works. You're jumping ahead. And you're getting my timeline off. Get it fixed. I can say what I want. <laughs> it's the Believe in FCS Football podcast. I've known Joe yes, for a long time. That's all you got to say. No. No. No, no. I'm going to open how I feel like I want to. Okay. You, you it wasn't a criticism. We, I was we, just we, speaking aloud. We I was talk- mumbling aloud. That's all okay. I was doing. Mumbling aloud. Those are contradictory words. Those do not go together. <laughs> you, you, okay. <laughs> so today's episode, we're back after Sean's trip to Florida. Uh, I hope you had a wonderful time. He claims he's tan. I don't really see the tan, um, but maybe, you know, you put a little color on. Hopefully you did. I'm I'm under the bright lights here. Forearms. I, I'm under the. I, Somebody's going to have to go about back how and do tan they get is the most boring thing right. ever. You know what you do that with? You do that with a girl that you're trying to flirt with, like the first week of high school, saying, "Oh, I'm way more <laughs> tan than you. Let's compare." That's what you do. Can that's somebody the, do a, a side by side comparison? The most boring conversation to talk about is how tan you got over the summer. We can all On- see. On that note, I would like for somebody to please uh, clip pictures from this episode and the last episode and see if we can get a, a, a side-by-side difference. Maybe we can. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about the Senior Bowl watch list released, and there's a good chunk of FCS players that made the list. We're going to talk about those players that are in contention to potentially be at the Reese's Senior Bowl in 2022, I guess, because that's going to be next year. Uh, We're also going to analyze the Phil Steele FCS All-American list, just giving our takeaways and thoughts on specific guys that we think maybe were snubbed, some interesting names that we don't really see, how they made it into the mix, just our thoughts and reactions to that Phil Steele list, which has consistently been one of the better FCS All-American lists, if not one of the most in-depth because of how many available positions and stuff that he he puts on there. Before we get to that, though, Sean, uh, can you... Please share a quick message with our listeners. I'd love to. And Joe, I'd love to do an impression. Okay. This is who I call uh, the the most annoying guy by week 15 of the NFL season. Okay. You ready? Go for it. Oh, you took the Bills under 12 wins. I could have guaranteed that they hit 14. Why would you take that futures <laughs> bet? Oh. Thank you. Uh, don't be that guy. <laughs> Don't be that guy what at all, all right? Be the other guy. Be the guy that's placing down bets. Be the guy that's placing futures and watching for the whole season. That guy uh, is the worst. He is the worst because he doesn't place a bet, and he likes to criticize and tell you how well he could have placed the bet. He, Joe, am I wrong? How many people of these do we know? A lot. A lot. They're the worst people ever. Jump off a bridge. The uh, You need to go and not be that person. So head on over to betonline.ag. All right. Place your futures bet for the NFL season. Joe and I are going to be placing plenty. And the MLB playoffs are coming up. Oh, my goodness. Nats are not in it. Phillies are getting booted. It's a great time in the NL East. I'm steamed about that. Uh, visit the website today or use your mobile device to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. So before the next big game, head on over to Bet Online and start playing today. Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for yeah. the uh, definite needed jab at the Phillies. Always appreciated. Well, they, uh, they, were in, they were in the lead for a quick, Dude, quick Zach hot Wheeler's second. Well, though. Yeah, I think I think it's like the only redeeming quality right now is how well Wheeler's pitching. But like they're just too inconsistent. Wheeler's getting like ten Ks a game, but he'll also give up like three home runs. And then I, you know what? I'm a Nats fan. I will always be a Nats fan. And maybe it's a stupid childish part of me. I still want Bryce Harper to do well, even though I hate the Phillies with all my heart. Mm. And when he starts playing well, I am kind of still happy. And I, I like what he did in early August. So you got him going for you. I, I admittedly smiled when I found out all of those players were traded away from the Nats. I was okay, all right. jubilated. Hey, the Clippers are going to be really good this year. 
Hey. Yeah, they brought. Oh, you're, they yeah, brought your Kawhi main core is great. For Eric hey. Bledsoe. What do you? Oh, you got an Eric Bledsoe. Okay, before. I'm sure he's going to be a second yes. piece to, to Paul George when Kawhi gets hurt again, or his load we're, management. We're not, we're and not I like talking Kawhi, basketball. But I'm just saying, you want to start taking big shots, we can start taking big shots. We have another. Show hey, remember the Devils were supposed record. to have like the number one MVP on their team, and then you said they're going to be in the Stanley Cup three years in a row, and now that guy is on the Rangers or the Canadians, wherever he is. He might be. Yeah, where's Taylor Hall at? Is he on the Bruins now? Where is he? Because he's not on the. He's not on the Devils. Yeah, shut up. I'll carve your we stupid have, we, ass up. We have another show to talk about. Your talk about sports that we shirts are left. That we we never I will record. Carve you up. Okay. Can we talk FCS? Can we can we talk <laughs> FCS? So I want to provide a, just a super quick update, Sean, on the South Dakota State trip. So we had oh. amazing reaction for like a solid two weeks. We had um, really really good response from fans after we made the announcement. Some people were disappointed. We had some Idaho fans that were a little bit. Uh, sad but understanding. Um, I apologize to. I think it was Thumper on on uh, on Twitter. Oh, I ac- yep. Did you see that? I accidentally I I was call said you, that it was you, an I- yep. it was an Idaho yep. fan who I mentioned the, that offered us brisket. <laughs> I feel so bad. I'm so sorry again for that because uh, you better have you know, his, name, a, his or her name right because I will. if you don't, it's going to be all my brisket. I have to. So the other thing I want to say too here is that I understand that I've gotten a lot of DMs, and I apologize if I haven't gotten back to you yet. I do intend to get back to you guys. It's just been insanely hectic with the college football season and NFL mm-hmm. season coming up soon, so I will respond. I've had a lot of really nice people that have offered us a ton of things. Uh, we, we've even had, I think, some people that have said they're going to help us get tickets and, and all that good stuff. So we will get back to you guys. We're going to plan the trip very very soon. We're going to figure out which weekend we're going to come, but. Pretty suffice to say, we're excited. We're looking forward to going and going and doing this. We just need to figure out the details soon, and we'll probably make more of an announcement uh, come first week of FCS. Yes, and to reiterate, for if we have any new listeners, uh, the people chose, and we will be going to a South Dakota State game because they had the most outpour of fans that had tweeted recommending South Dakota State, uh, and we are not going as media, so we will be one of the people. We will be one with the people. We will be in three layers of clothing and the thickest jeans you've ever seen. (laughs) Uh, we will not be asking players or coaches questions. We will be there to drink and play cornhole and eat some delicious food and watch some good college football. Sean will be wearing really thick jeans. I will oh, be you've really never seen jeans wearing, this thick. Wearing a, a uncomfortably tight jeans. Uh, it's going to be you know great. My jeans great are like jeans you would wear in shop class, where like in case a <laughs> sawzall went went awry, it wouldn't cut through them. They That's were what like, my one pair of jeans are like. <laughs> Yeah, I know the <laughs> pair of jeans that you're referencing. You wore them like every single time that you went out if you didn't wear sweatpants. Yeah, I had one pair of jeans. Yeah. They it was like a tarp. Is the is the They're so could, heavy. They're like coveralls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's Sean's fashion. <laughs> so yeah, we're excited for the trip. More to come on that. Thank you again for everybody who's reached out. We will be getting back to you soon. Uh just been a little bit uh backlogged and swamped in terms of being able to respond but as we said sean we want to talk about first the senior bowl watch list that was released jim nagy of the senior bowl known for uh putting out a great event uh there should be a watch list for some of these other events the east west shrine game is always a big game for fcs guys but just to quickly rip through these players because it's there's not a lot of guys on, or enough guys that i can read through all of them and we're, we're going to provide through. some takeaways Cordell Volson, North Dakota State, offensive mm. tackle. These are the offensive linemen. Uh, Nick Zakelge, uh, Fordham, mm. Matt Woletsko, well, uh, North Dakota, mm. Trevor Penning, Maybe Northern Iowa. Like the two, the, the, yeah, I should have. Uh, <laughs> Drew Bones, Illinois State. That's what I get for telling Aaron, them to rip, folks. Aaron Johnson, South Dakota State. Braxton Jones, Southern Utah. Quarterback EJ Perry mm. from Brown. Aquil, Aquil Glass, Alabama AM, and m Cole Kelly, Southeastern Louisiana. My guy. Uh, Zara Cooper, Jacksonville State. Running backs are Derek Wynn from Furman. Jamine Martin from North Carolina a t Julius Chestnut from Sacred mm. Heart. Pierre Strong Jr. from South Dakota State. Wide receivers are Andre Miller from, my, uh, from Maine. Christian Watson from North Dakota State. The Gene Dixon from Nichols, Jaquez Ezard from Sam Houston, Tanner Connor from Idaho State. The only linebacker is Trey Walker from Idaho, the fantastic Vandal. Uh, defensive linemen are DJ Coleman, Jacksonville State, Isaiah Chambers, McNeese State, Kobe Turner, Richmond, Mike Green, James Madison. Only edge is, wait, there's only one edge? Deshaun Dixon, Norfolk State. That is bizarre to me that that is 
There's only one edge out of all the guys. I'll, I'll Keep get to on that ripping, Joe. Marquise Bell, Florida A and M, is the one safety, and then the corners: Zion McCollum, Sam Houston, Dakobe Durant, South Carolina State, Fernando Jordan, Southeastern Louisiana, and then mm-hmm. Darian McKenzie from Merrimack are the remaining players. So, Sean, let's get to your first takeaway, and you decided to bring up a, a Bison. Yeah, I did, and uh, it's my expertise would be the offensive line. And later on in the show, I'm going to tell you about an offensive line who has been admittedly in my blind spot for whatever reason, uh, and I'll get to him. But right now, for the Senior Bowl watch list, I'm going to tell you about a guy who is going to make the Senior Bowl, and he will perform at the Senior Bowl, and he will be on an NFL team next year, and that is Cordell Volson. He is as polished as they can get for this class's offensive line group. Uh, he's in North Dakota State, so he's had plenty of of great tutelage from both his coach and uh, teammates that have made the NFL. I know Dylan Radins, I was watching him uh, just steamroll Atlanta in Tennessee uh, last week uh, during that preseason game. And, you know, he was a teammate of Volson and Volson who played right guard last year. I, I think Joe, you ever see those videos of the quarter mile drag races? Yes, I was. Ironically, I was watching uh, those this weekend. Uh, my friend Devin was here visiting. We, oh, that's what you guys that. do. <laughs> I'm sure, <laughs> there's some more. <laughs> you know, when they have like a, uh, a, a you know a Hellcat up on the line, and the on the other line, there's like a a crazy ass 1970s Ford pickup truck with a massive engine in it. Yeah, and they just start off rip, and then the the, the truck just wins by a landslide. Yes. Yeah, that's what Cordell Volson kind of is. Uh, he just goes out of the starting blocks and he gets vertical. He gets to that quarter mile, which would be on a football scale, that five yards down the field faster than many offensive linemen that I've ever seen, especially for his build. There are like leaner offensive linemen that are uh, uh, kind of just a different body type. But for his mass and, and to say that in a, a good way, like there's athletic, crazy offensive linemen like Tyron Smith. He's massive, but you would characterize him as a lean offensive lineman. Jason Peters and Trent Williams, athletic, but different body body style. And Volson, for being of that kind of Trent Williams-esque body style where you could put him at guard or tackle, how quickly he gets upfield and makes blocks on linebackers and how effectively he does, it's insane. And it's just because he knows exactly what he's doing because you don't see offensive linemen go barreling ahead like that if they don't know what they're doing. They'll go three yards, stop, look for somebody. Volson, I've never seen do that. He goes straight ahead. He knows exactly where his block is, and he executes it. And he just comes like a freaking, like a, a mm. what, what is it, wrecking ball. He just he'll just destroy you. He will uh, annihilate you. And he would, he's, he's killing FCS players, and he's going to crush, uh, and I'll say it right now, he's going to crush NFL linebackers. He just will. He's, he's too sturdy. Uh, so him being first team did warm my heart a little bit. Or you mean senior bowl rather senior bowl. Pardon me. Pardon me. Yeah. I think he was first team um, also. Yes. Yes. And Dylan Radon's we know last year was one of the darlings of the FCS draft prospects, despite very few guys declaring good enough to be selected by the Tennessee Titans pretty early on Cordell Volson. I think that if he declared, he probably would have been a, a signable player. He was in the mix. At the very least, he would have been a high priority UDFA. So for yep. him to make this list, not surprising to me whatsoever. North Dakota State just builds offensive linemen differently. They, unlike any other program, can across the board recruit quality FBS guys that might take a couple of years to start at an FBS program that can immediately plug in and play and get more experience. And I think that's that's why they've had success putting guys that are at least contending for NFL rosters um, because they have so much experience. They do, and they teach them the NFL style also at North Dakota State. So they're already primed to go to – they can play at any other college football uh, uh, program in America, mm-hmm. and they can play at the NFL uh, quickly. I mean, there's always a learning curve, but they're, they're getting prepped and primed. Right. That's, I think, a big advantage too. It, it's a very – run centric scheme that they they operate in and right. i think that definitely helps and prepares them for the next level because of how much run blocking they're doing it, it really really is good for a big reason why 
they have so much success. So Volsa makes a lot of sense to me. I'm insanely perplexed, as you can tell, folks, by uh, a couple guys that I just don't understand how they don't end up in the mix for edge and also for safety. How the Sean Dixon from Norfolk State makes the list over Isaiah Chambers of McNeese State and then also Jordan Lewis of Southern is odd to me. I can understand a little bit more Jordan Lewis because we've talked about the size concerns. There's going to be actually Jordan Lewis. Is he an underclassman? I don't want to mess this up. He might be. I'll look at it right now. No, he's a junior. That's why. Ah, Forget about Jordan Lewis. Isaiah Chambers, regardless, that one doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. That one I'm very perplexed by because this guy has been around for a while. He played at Houston. NFL teams are familiar with him. He ends up um, at McNeese State, has a very good year last year. He's only going to have an even better year next year. At the very least, this guy is going to be an East-West Shrine game player, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's in contention for the Senior Bowl come the end of the season because of how good he is. Nicario Harper, too. I'm a little bit surprised, too, that... uh, to confirm his year. I'm make sure I'm not messing that one up either. He's a redshirt sophomore. Wow, I'm botching the year. I don't know what year anybody is because of the damn COVID year. You know what? I'm going to come out and say that. Like, but I, yeah, yeah, you, you know it, what? You I, am, I am not going to be apologetic of that. I am not going to be apologetic of that. I have no dudes are 25 that are sophomores right now. We've got guys that have played at, at school a year before we got there and they're still playing. I yes. don't know what year Lorenzo that is. Bryant, Lorenzo Bryan is the perfect example. He AJ was Bebo the was in our class. Yes. It, 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 Mac, and I love these guys with all my heart, but it is just so confusing. And it's we don't know who is so still playing. Damn who confusing. Isn't, who, I don't know who can still play also. I don't know. I, I don't know. That too. Yes. <laughs> Regardless, Isaiah Chambers, I'm going to stand on pass, that hill. You get a pass, Joe. That's a pass. Isaiah Chambers, I'm sitting on that hill though. <laughs> that one's confusing to me. If N- Nicario Harper and Jordan Lewis would be seniors right now, I have to say that they would at least be red. Sh- one of them would at least be a redshirt junior. Jordan Lewis would be a senior, but I'm going to stick with the Isaiah Chambers. That one doesn't really make a whole lot to me. Technically, I think they're they're um, they could be eligible because I think it's like four years, or you need I to have graduated. Need to the wrong the guy. Deal. Eligibility, wrong guy. Eligibility for the senior bowl, you hey. need to have graduated. That's here's, the whole whole shtick. Here's a message to the players. Uh, let's just do four years and out. It makes our jobs a lot easier. Right? <laughs> you're done. I don't care if you're a sophomore. You're done. It, it doesn't matter. I, I just I, we got to do it. I, we can't keep up. You've, you've got quadruple super seniors at this point. What's your second takeaway from this, this senior bowl list? My sec- What are you smelling there? I had something on my microphone. The oh, amount of times you spit into actually, that thing. You know what, Joe, that is? That's actually donut icing. Huh. So there were some folks over and we were doing a show where we were trying donuts and I had swiped over and I realized I had gotten icing on my microphone cover. That's disgusting. That's been sitting there for a week. <laughs> <I didn't... laughs> Your second takeaway is regarding EJ That's Perry. Making this list. <laughs> oh yeah. Here's something for the, the non hometown, but hometown state. It's uh, Joe and I, have a, what would you call it a mixed feelings about this individual yeah because we played against him he was the only good player on the team by literally a mile it was yes. like playing against a bunch of high quality high schoolers and then uh a acc quarterback yeah um ej perry on the list he kind of could definitely be on this list and he also could not because he plays at brown and it's in the Ivy League, and Brown is not a good team. It's not like he's playing at Harvard or Yale. Uh, and he is on Brown, and he is there, and he just kind of does things on the football field that make you feel a little bit embarrassed when he's on the opposing team, which is you just you you need to experience once this year. Tune into a Brown game if you have the availability or the ability. EJ Perry is going to stand out, and maybe it's because he's playing in the Ivy Leagues. But, Joe, how many sacks did he escape versus us? Ten? I think the better question is how many fourth downs did he pick up? There Probably were eight. Four, at least. Three yeah. or four when we, we played him? We played them my ju- our junior year, which I believe was 2019 was, or 2018. It was, it was our senior year when we faced EJ Perry. I don't remember if we played. No, no, because no, I was on the field and my folks came down, and I was I was injured by then. I thought I was going to get at, it, was it was junior year, bro. 
He was at Brown, I'm pretty sure. I know. That was senior year, dude. It's no, it wasn't. Long. It wasn't. At Brown, even was years, senior year. even years, they were at home. E- even years, we were at home playing them because that's I played against Brown. My no, sophomore no, no, year. because my our first year, I can't believe we're arguing over this. Our first year, freshman was, year, was home against at Brown, Brown, and we got beat. A freshman year oh, wait, home, what? we got beat. Oh yeah, we got beat freshman year. Yeah, sophomore year, we beat them. Mm-hmm. And then junior and senior year, I think we beat them, or it might have been the other way around. I don't remember. What the it's been so damn long. We're losing our minds over here. F? Regardless, um, whatever. EJ uh, Perry, he, he's is super it. surprising. He's on the list, but he's super talented. Yeah, he's a he, he's really a, a diamond in the rough that we only know about because we played against him. And the thing is, he's had some insane stat lines that have sometimes gotten passed up. Uh, by Chris Oladokun or Aquil Glass or whoever over the years at the quarterback position, um, he'll throw for 400 yards and run for 100, and he'll not really break a sweat doing it. But it's just very odd. So get yourself acquainted with him because we definitely had to. Another guy we we have to note here that you need to be acquainted with, Devin Wynn, running back from uh, Furman, not on any of the All-American lists, a guy who seemingly... Some people might have forgotten about that he's not getting enough recognition. Uh, he, there will be an interview run on the NFL Prospects pod. Ryan spoke to him. Mm. Ryan Roberts of RisingDraft.com, who I do a lot of work with, uh, is a very big fan. Ryan went out of his way to literally like give me like a whole spiel on why he likes him so much. Give me like a, like more than usual. Usually he'll give me like a, like oh I talked to this FCS guy kind of thing. He's like you need to talk to him. He's like you need to try and get him on your show and. I said to him, like, well, why would I interview him if you interviewed him? It's going to be on the same YouTube feed. It's That would be stupid. Regardless, like Devin Wynn, fun player. And I think that we kind of forgot about him during the spring. Given the opportunity to tote the rock and get some more carries on a very run-heavy team, this dude is going to put up some numbers. We are going to remember exactly who he is come the end of the season. And even if he doesn't put up, like, a 1,000 yards rushing and he just has a couple good performances, NFL teams are fully aware of this guy. This is an NFL-capable running back. I'm surprised Elijah Dotson didn't find his way into the mix because that has yeah. always been somebody who's talked up as a, a, a multi-level threat, a third-down type back that's and small and shifty. because of his build. Because he's 5'10", right. but he also plays like he's 6 feet tall. Like he could play exactly. whatever, whatever size. But I still love the I love the Devin Wynn pick here. Dude, it's, I'm watching, it makes sense. I'm watching his clips right now. First of all, he wears number zero at the running back position. Which is just scary. It's that's a, that's f- that's phenomenal. I'll say that right now. That is just phenomenal. <laughs> um, he kind of who was the running back after Fournette at LSU? He kind of runs like him, Darius Geis. He kind of like the way that his shoulders move a little bit, and the way that he that. lowers his shoulder. It, it's kind of like yeah, they're little stutter steps. It kind of reminds me of him. Just a little bit. Yeah, I'm not. It's, I don't think it's pound for pound because Geis was definitely mm-hmm. a little more power than shift. But with Win, I kind of see it a bit, especially just in the running style. Right. Right. I don't know. Maybe it's just a build, but sometimes my mind locks onto something. I can't think of a different comp. Mm-hmm. I'm not forcing it, Ryan. So get off my back. It's just an immediate <laughs> comp that I found. If it's bad, it's bad. I'm not forcing it. Jeez. Out of left field. I Ryan, please tag Sean and tell him he forced that comp. I, I need to hear I it. I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> I'm glad he's the Phillies a, stink, too. I know he's a Phillies fan, too. He's our most consistent listener. So I know. That's the he, thing. He, he will he'll, come at you. He'll bring up stuff that I forgot I said. I'm like, oh, <laughs> here's Ryan, the P1. I'm like, why is we, he the P1? Because well, we, we, we frequently <laughs> challenge him. We oh, that's right. Yeah, we say stuff that is usually aggressively in his direction, and he always yeah. But, but we're not he draft weebs that he that he doesn't have to respond to. Yes, I forget what you said last time that he responded. It's to. So it was stupid. something about draft. Twitter. I think it was yeah. my my guy, the my guy rant. That's what it was. That's what it was. That's what, yeah, he called you his guy. That's the um, worst. I speaking hate it. of my guys, Phil Steele <laughs> has his go. guys. <laughs> the All American list released by Phil Steele, consistently one of the best All American <laughs> lists, especially for FCS. Uh, that was put out very recently. I forget the exact day, but that was uh, a, a buzz of the All American, the All Conference list. I have one of the current players that I talked to who sent me a screenshot and asked why he wasn't on it. Um, mm. And I just there was a very questionable player that was on there over him for for the All Conference. And I'll, I'll tell you off air, but it was very, 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 
very questionable. I'm um, excited. I love the skinny. Yes, love the skinny. So all American list. Obviously, though. don't love being skinny. No, uh, yeah. are you telling me? <laughs> me you telling me? Yeah, you don't. I'm not going to read through the list. Go look it up because there's a ton of names. Well, uh, do, you, do we want to tweet out the, the whole link? Ah, uh, no. Our listeners are okay. smart enough to go through this and find the list. It would be like five minutes of me reading through the entire thing. And That's also, true. Very easy to not hear some of the things that I'm saying if I rip through too quickly. We want to provide our takeaways, though. So one of the things that is uh, of note that I want to hit here first, Sean, is that Pierre Strong Jr., first team running back out of South Dakota State, justifiable. Pierre Strong Jr., one of the best running backs in the FCS. But I'm so shocked that Isaiah Davis does not make this list. And I yeah. stand by the fact that Isaiah he's Davis is the... He's the I, I think he's the better he's running back on the he's team. He's young. I agree. He's young, though. He's young. I bet. And call me out now, folks. And, mm. and remember this quote, this clip, this. Do whatever you want with it. Isaiah Hot Davis will, fin- will finish alert. with more Hot rushing yards alert. and more rushing touchdowns than Pierre Strong Jr. at the end of the season. <laughs> that's all for that's all for my take. That's it. I think that he should have at least been third team. To not include him, I think is is crazy that Phil Phil still didn't put him on there. Well, I think it's uh, my first takeaway for this is that there are no Illinois State players on here, so I know Kwame Curtis will not be listening to this show. (laughs) Are there really no Illinois State? No, no. There's some Southern Illinois guys, but no Illinois State Uh guys. Uh, Yeah, Isaiah Davis, his playoff run last year was really, really strong. I wouldn't call it phenomenal or special. Uh, but he was that team's offense in that playoff run. Maybe it was phenomenal uh, because the quarterback went down. They had to rely on somebody and Davis picked up the slack. Does that necessarily mean that he deserves first team over uh, chestnut? No, but it means that if there was an honorable mention or something, I don't know. Maybe he's a third team guy. The thing is, I mean, this kind of goes into my first point here, Joe, Mm -hmm. the running back class for this upcoming year, very strong. It's a very strong year. Mm. And my first point is people are going to be a little bit mad that John Maine Martin is second team and not first team. Uh, Zay but, just got waved. I'm sorry. It's just what? That just threw me off. I, Who did? Zay just got waved. The Texans just waved him. We're referring to Isaiah Coulter. You kidding me? One year. They waved him after one year. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. That just that that stinks. Really and Murph got hurt, um, which stinks. That's a separate issue. AP played well. He's been playing well. I know. Sorry, continue. Did, I didn't mean to cut Murph you off. really good too. Um, but yes. yeah, okay. Uh, he'll get picked up. He'll be fine. Yeah, he's a big boy. <laughs> um, what was it? Uh, running backs. How good the class is. Yeah, it, they're just strong this year. So they're going to be deep. Joe, if if Davis isn't on it this year, he'll be on it next year. So that's how it works. It's it's how I think it's how it's, I think we've had this conversation for almost three years in a row about one running back getting slighted over the other, and it's because. Uh, we just have guys that just keep on surfacing and rotating through whether it's Julian gums or, or, you know, it's just, we just get a bevy of FCS players mm-hmm. that we're thinking like, this guy's the guy. Oh, this guy's the guy. And then sometimes it's like, Oh, James Robinson. Yeah. He's really good. And then he's number 100 on the top 100 in the uh, NFL. It's, it's, it's a deep class. I'd say this season, we're kind of going to get a little more, concrete with who can really play who can really not play because it's a regular type season it's not going to be broken up into two different fall spring what are we doing what's the year what's the recruiting whatever it's going to be week one to week 10 and it's going to be who has the best stats who has performed best against the best teams and we'll have a little more evidence as to what we can make our judgments on Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love that point there where these FCS running backs, there's just so many names that can play into the conversation. Right. And you can really plug some of these guys in and out. So you can't really get too upset. Uh, and I can't get too upset about Isaiah Davis. I would at the very least have put him over Jawan Fari of Monmouth. Um, maybe they didn't want to go, maybe Phil still didn't want to go too crazy on the South Dakota State running backs because he already had one on there. Yeah. Um, but there is a lot of talent. There is consistently a lot of talent at the running back position at the FCS level. I truly believe that if, for whatever reason, you reached out to Phil Steele and you said, hey, what about Isaiah Davis? He would give you a rational answer, noting that, oh, yeah, that guy's really good. 
but I had to do this or this. You know, I, I feel like he would have a rational answer. And he's not just like, oh, who's that? Because nobody's right. like, who's that anymore? Nobody is. They can't be. So my second takeaway here, and I might get a little crap from some Sam Houston fans, and I know, oh, I know we have some we Sam go. Houston State listeners. Uh, also, was talking to the walk-on here. radio guys earlier, so they might be tuning into this episode. No disrespect to Eric Schmidt. I think he's a good quarterback. I commend him for what he did in the national championship game. He won a national championship. And he won a national championship. Won a national championship. He deserves recognition for doing so. He deserves all conference honors. But am I? does he deserve to be third team over Cameron Ward and Akil Glass, who are going to probably put up way better statistics than him and also have already put up way better statistics than them? Here's my beef. I, I just, I'm going to skip to my point right. also. I, the reigning offensive player of the year is second team. And we like Barry <laughs> why is Why is Kelly second team? I, I'm cool. I, I'm cool with Schmidt being third team or not third team. Because one, he won a national championship, and that's a good thing. Two, he's not the most polished quarterback in the class. He could not be. But I think that Steele put him on there because he was the quarterback that won a national championship. And it's just, that's not to diminish your beef about this because I love, you know, I'm going to let you pop off a little bit if you choose to, but Mm -hmm. Cole Kelly is first team. He is the quarterback this year. And, uh, uh, but also Barrier close second. That's one, a one B I have Kelly over Barrier. So that's a little bit of my beef. It's not as strong as yours. My tone is not presenting it as such. Uh, But I'll, I'll let you get back to yours, Joe, but it's, it's odd that we both had almost synonymous uh, right, I, I wasn't as I wasn't as <laughs> I wasn't as bent out of shape. I think on the the Barry A. Cole Kelly. I understand your argument. I just need him to win more games. Uh, That's all. I just yeah, need Barry I, to I, win I, more games. Yeah. I, I would hope that they're they're more successful this year, and I think that he's going to prove that first team selection this upcoming yeah. season for Ewu. I hope he but, does. Big fan. Yeah, and I think he will. But I, I'm still again. I like Eric Schmidt. I think he's a good quarterback. But I just don't. I think Cameron Ward from Incarnate Ward is a better quarterback. I yeah. think that. Aquil Glass is a better quarterback and has proven more. He's shown more consistency. Yes. And NFL teams clearly like him. He made the Senior Bowl watch list. Right. He's going to get an NFL shot, and he deserves to be. And it's not like he hasn't doesn't have the statistics to back it up. It's not like he's just a guy that's got a huge arm and can't control it. He has produced okay, in his Joe, career. Here's one for you. I'm going to take you a little bit off base. Zarek Cooper or Eric Schmidt? Eric Schmidt. I Zarek okay. Cooper didn't even, didn't even play in the spring, and he, he right got about. hurt, and I... I I'm a little disappointed with with some of his performances last year mm-hmm. as well. I just I would have rather we gotcha. we saw. I'm, more I'm just seeing where your baseline Schmidt. is at. Is all yeah. yeah. That's what, I'm just seeing where your baseline is. Okay. Um. You so you ended up throwing and pitching in there. Um. Another one of your takeaways. I'm gonna get my last one. I'll let you get to your last one. Yeah. I don't understand, and it's kind of similar along the lines. Wait, of the can we save this one for Isaiah last? Because that's one. when I really want to start ranting. Okay, go ahead. You let go me ahead, get over. Yours. Let me get mine over with because it's positive. Um. And it's also a little bit, this is actually embarrassing for me. Um, Trevor Penning, who was first team on the, uh, or he was on the senior bowl watch list and he's first team here. He's been a blind spot for me because you and I had Spencer Brown last year and he got drafted and he's six foot 10 and he is great in pass sets and he's got long arms. So he dominated my attention. This Penning guy, I'm just, it's, it's a takeaway and this is a recommendation for you. Go onto YouTube, search up Spencer Penning. You will immediately, the first two clips say, oh my God. And then the next 10 minutes, Trevor Penning. Oh, I said Spencer. Pardon me. Yes. Understandable. The, uh, you're going to look at him and be like, oh my God, where did they find him? How did you and I get two of these guys? It's miraculous what he does I mean, he's just as mean as a guy you've seen on film and you could tell he's he's wearing a helmet there's no close-up it's just film you could tell that was just an insane finish of a block he's gonna and joe i know you're big on him also and this is just kind of a, a, a sean discovery uh which again embarrassing that it came so late but i'm all in he is in the volson and burkhalter camp that's what he's in for me and burkhalter shouldn't be second team uh, but he is. I know Fornadel's first team. You need a tackle there. Uh, Fornadel is fine. He's just so long and he's got strong hands. So defensive ends struggle against him. 
I don't think his feet are exceptional, but I think he's a very good offensive tackle. Uh, but I, I think Burkhalter should have taken a first team spot. Regardless, Penning, Volson, Burkhalter. That those are my three. I also want to just toss in there. There is an NFL Draft Prospects podcast interview with Trevor Penning that was published a month ago. So go uh, go check that out. That's a great conversation that Ryan had with Trevor Penning. Ryan again. I will always mention if Ryan is high on somebody and he's very high on Trevor Penning. He should be. Thinks he could be a day two type of guy because of how physically dominant he is. And it makes sense. These Northern Iowa guys are just built different. They are trained different um, because of that strength and conditioning program. So my final takeaway, as I was alluding oh, yeah. to, Let's get into Pierre it. Strong, Isaiah Davis, very similar in this sense. How we can put on here Tyler Hudson from Central Arkansas, who I absolutely love. Fantastic he's great. Fantastic receiver. First, First team, team, justifiably. But you don't put on Lawan Winningham anywhere. Anywhere. Where did I I don't get it. Is is Phil just against the thought of putting guys at the same position from the same team or something? Because Lawan Winningham's just as talented as Tyler Hudson. They're both they're both good because they play opposite of each other. They're phenomenal. I, 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 they're how both can you phenomenal. Skip that? Unless the Winningham's not playing this year, he was on the 2021 roster. It just doesn't. It's so confusing. To You've me. seen we've seen Winningham's tweets. Also, it's him and Hudson. They're they're ready for the season. It, it, that's what I've been seeing. Yep. He's on this list. He needs to be on this list. We have seen NFL wide receivers on our team. We've seen two of them. We know what they're built like. We know what their film looks like. How many times I, I've watched countless hours of the offense and Joe has watched countless hours of just the team. So we have a pretty good gauge of what an exceptional FCS player who will be going on to the next level and who could play or make a team, whatever practice squad, whatever at the next level, we know what they look like. We know what they act like. We know how they move. LaJuan Winningham from everything that we've seen, or at least me personally, at least deserves a third team nod. And I think that's almost insulting mm-hmm. to him also. I would put him on second team. I would almost put him on first team. I think that because uh, Tyler Hudson was so phenomenal last year, that took away a little bit of the shine. But Winningham is still who he is. He didn't take a step back by any means. Joe, did he? No. No. Well, so that strangely enough, he's not. there's no stats listed for 2020. And you know, there's obviously limited games for some of these, these schools. He was in the so. Austin P game, bro. Right. He had the big catch down the sideline. He was huge that game. He was drawing mm-hmm. PIs all over the place. Right. I don't know. Questionable stuff. Interesting Stinks. takes there. We're big uh, fans, is. Yeah, big fans. Folks, if you didn't know this, mm. the season is right around the corner. If you don't know, we've now got you some know. first games on the 28th. Um, we've got just a quick peek at the, the calendar. Get it pulled up. We've got. This is the last show before we do a preview episode. So next week's going to be, be a preview of that first weekend. There are some games that we're going to be talking about. We're going to be getting into it. Um, Sean and I will talk off air on how the schedule will look in season, but we will try to do what we can to bring additional content, not just one episode a week. Uh, so be on the on the lookout for that. What do you what do you got? You're giving me a look. I. I don't know. You're just talking so quietly, and and you're talking like, quietly. No, you just went. We were just yelling about Lawan Winningham, and then it became okay. somber Joe, and it took me. We've into got a weird the FCS spot. football season there around we go. the corner. That's what I need. Come on, close us we're out, hot, up. Joe. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Hit no, the damn wait, we still got more. Button. We still got more. There's nothing else to talk about. What do you? What do you mean? What else do we have? What else more is there? No, you could. You know, talk about getting juiced up for the season. I am juiced you're up. Saying, Hit the you're, damn you're, subscribe do, button so you don't miss out on the content. I'll do another. On I'll YouTube, do another impression. Apple Podcasts on Spotify. Yeah, we're like a week out, okay. man, and it's just gonna be a vibe. We, you know, we'll sit down, have an IPA, and then we'll just watch some FCS football. We'll come back on here and talk about. There it. are so we, many words that I want to say, but I will try to remain professional. And, yeah, no, it's gonna be fun. Follow us on social media at Joe DeLeon, at Sanderson Radio. You know, you have, Hit you the got subscribe a button right on NFL Prospects Pod uh, on YouTube is where you can find our show. Also, Believe Podcast Network on YouTube is where the show is viewable. At Believe Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming straight at you full speed, swinging with FCS content. We're coming.